Hey, welcome to a fresh new episode of the TD News Show and a happy Friday to everybody. And I know, I know, I was missing for a few weeks. Let's just not talk about that. Let's talk about some news. Let's have a good time. And let's start this episode. And let's start the episode with Apple. Because there are some interesting development happening with their SOCs. First, their new upcoming SOC for their 2021 Mac lineup, legitly named M1X. Now, as per all the reports and rumors, this CPU could be a 12-core CPU with 8 Firestorm performance core and 4 iStorm performance core compared to its predecessors 8 core 4 plus 4 configuration and not only in the processing side but also in the graphic side it is getting a upgrade with 16 cores and 256 execution unit which is exact double which you can find in m1's gpu variant and also it's gonna be of 35 to 45 tdp cpu with a doubled amount of ram which is 32 gigabytes now this chip is expected to announced by apple in coming months and likely to power their upcoming 2021 macbook pro 14 macbook pro 16 and a 27 inch iMac. but again all these are not official news so as always take them with a grain of salt but to be honest judging by their past effort and their reputation i think apple won't put out anything less than what we are hearing from all the rumors but it's not all sunshine and roses for apple because some malware found their way to m1 max longtime max security researcher patrick waldell published finding on wednesday about a safari adware extension that was originally written to run on intel x86 based chip but has now redeveloped specifically for m1 max the malicious extension go search 2022 is a member of notorious credit mac adware family now if you want to know more about this topic i have linked down two articles one from engadget and another from wired go and check them out these are good reads and if especially good reads if you have a m1 mac for yourself but now let's talk about some coins and not coins made with nickels and coppers but digital coins i mean cryptocurrency it came back on trend again and again some brands are supporting and i'm talking to you zotac recently they tweeted an army of zotac gaming gpu hungry for coins and shared a picture where they are showing their beautiful white 30 series gpu in a rack and it's not the first time that zotac has openly supported miners but this time the internet doesn't took it light and after that zotac obviously deleted that tweet now, a lot of you be might thinking that why don't brand put out uh, GPUs which are solely focused uh, for mining? Uh, well, NVIDIA kind of did yesterday. They officially announced a new family of products specifically designed to satiate the demand coming to cryptocurrency mining workloads and farms. And at the same time, the company has announced that the 3060 launch driver will include software limitation for cryptocurrency mining workloads, especially correlated with Ethereum mining. Now, this might sound pretty good to you, but there are some loopholes. It sounds really good that NVIDIA is making or putting out GPUs which are specifically meant for mining, but they are repurposing their gaming GPUs or their gaming chip. So that means it could affect gaming GPU stocks. And at the same time, if they start to limit uh, mining capabilities on their gaming focus card, they are going to create another problem. Look. The prices are not coming down anytime soon, at least right now in a situation like this. So if you thought, okay, let's max my credit card and buy a, a 3080 then or a 3060 and mine some G, um, Bitcoins or Ethereum, whatever cryptocurrency you are mining, and then somehow make up the price. And after NVIDIA did this, you can't do that. So that's a problem for us general gamers but all the mining farms and all those people who know what they are doing they can easily flash uh, bios change some stuff up and not only that they have money to hire professional people they have money to hire 
nvidia's employee now at first i was on the same board as most of the people that this is a good move but after watching Moore's Law is Dead's video I kind of understand the situation right now that it is a pretty good move for Nvidia's PR team it is really a good move for them but it is not that much of a good move for us gamers and judging by the situation and judging by the trend what's happening around right now i don't think that cryptocurrencies trend gonna go down anytime soon it's just gonna go up so so be ready for 2018 or when the that happened 2018 or 2019 so last time when the whole boom happened with the cryptocurrency stuff so be ready for that, be prepared for that. But that's not the end for all the bad news for today. It feels like kind of an eternity when it comes to PC hardware and their prices, stock situation. And one of the biggest contributor in this situation is the current situation of the world right now. We are going through some tough time and most of the big fabs are not working properly. Now, the situation got a little bit worse because Samsung has been ordered to shut down their fabs totally in Austin, Texas. Now, if you don't know what's happening in Austin, uh, Texas, well, there has been a massive, massive power outage going on in Texas. And the situation right now in Texas is not good. To be honest, it is not good. I'm following the story every single day. Now, if I try to explain what's happening in Texas, uh, I have to stretch this video a lot. And I'm not sure a lot of you guys are interested to hear me out. Uh, so I will link down a video. It's from Philip Trefanko. Uh, if you don't know who he is, then go and watch that video. He is an awesome guy. Uh, I would suggest you go and sub to him if you don't know him and tell him I send you. Tell him Technodefined I send you. And now let's talk about our good old dear friend Facebook. Because they recently banned every single Australian news source from their platform so if you don't know what's happening australia is trying to legislate a law where every single tech giant has to pay their uh, all the news companies because news companies are not in a good situation right now the situation are getting worse day by day thanks to all the digital media consumption so a lot of tech giant tried to convince australia or australian government to not put out this law but australia is gonna put out this law or pass this law in a few weeks so facebook thought it's a good time to say no because we have power but uh, facebook just gone one step ahead as always they banned non-profits uh health administration pages which at this situation people need but at the same time they didn't ban all those groups which, which you know uh spreading misleading information about uh vi the virus or end of the world like facebook doing facebooky things one word to explain this facebook doing facebooky things and at this point i don't know like I, I won't be surprised Facebook like whenever there's a, some controversy happening with Facebook I don't know I'm not surprised anymore uh, like it's Facebook they can do stuff like that on the other hand Google they ban uh, threatened Australia that they will ban their uh, search engine from Australia totally but they didn't they paid all the news outlets and to be honest they paid mostly most of the big news outlets but one thing i'm gonna say no matter where you live it doesn't matter if you live in india australia on the states wherever you are support local businesses support local newspaper because local newspapers are not in a good situation right now so if you can support your local businesses and local newspaper but talking about news let's talk about today's quick news because this is the time for the quick news so let's talk about the quick news shall we amd's radio on rx 6700 series to launch on march 18 intel rocket lake s lands on march 15 and adder lake s uses enhanced 10 nanometer super fin process google reportedly shut down its stadia studios a week after praising them classic google like i'm just thinking about the mental state of all the stadia employees one week before the shutdown, Google tell them, guys, you guys doing a fabulous job. You killed it. You nailed it. And next week, uh, guys, we have bad news. We are shutting you guys down. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. NVIDIA seemingly begins resupplying GeForce a GTX 1050 Ti GPUs. Now you can get a passively cooled RTX 3080 PC. Microsoft announced FPS boost mode for Xbox Series X and S consoles. Samsung's new HBM2 memory has 1.2 teraflop of embedded processing power. Wait a minute. 
a memory has 1.2 teraflop of processing power what's gonna happen next oculus quest 2 may be receiving 120 hertz refresh rate support in upcoming upgrade microsoft is launching an xbox wireless headset with dolby atmos support epic game files eu antitrust compliant against apple panasonic made a moody farting robot looks like a cat in a sock that's the thing we wanted panasonic a robot which looks like a cat in a sock and not only that it farts that's the thing we wanted in our life. That's the thing missing. A farting robot. Great job, Panasonic. Apple TV Plus is now available on Google TV. And lastly, Tesla cuts price for their entry level Model 3 and Model Y. Now, this was all for today's Techie Stuff. And if you want to know more about any of these stories, all the links are linked down in the description. So go ahead and check them out. Now, let's talk about some of the stuff I like starting with. Marvel is gonna launch their behind the scenes docu-series with their one making of WandaVision from March. Now, <laughs> like, it's Marvel. It's a docu-series. And it's about movies or how they made that particular movie or series. Like, <laughs> all... Christmas came early this year, man. Like, I haven't watched the WandaVision, but I am 100% sure that I'm gonna watch uh, the making of WandaVision, which is... Uh, I don't. And next one, let's talk about Disney and their new Cruella trailer. How, like, have you guys watched it? I watched it. Um, it looked kind of a gritty, kind of, it gave me, you know, that Walking Phoenix Joker vibe. But uh, I'm not sure. Like, it's a Disney movie with that dark tone. Uh, like, again, I'm not getting my hopes up. But let's talk about the last bit of news for today. And that is... The upcoming season of Brooklyn Nine-Nine is gonna be the final season, at least for now, because it happened previously. I don't know why they are cancelling Brooklyn Nine-Nine. It's like one of the best shows. Like, I know it's not super duper head or it doesn't have a cult following like Game of Thrones, but it's a pretty decent good show, man. It's a cop show, but it has a lot more than that. Like, it's, it's, it's pretty good. Like, you know, Nine-Nine. But they're again ending it. But like, I have my hopes up for this that it's some network gonna revive it because it's a really great show. Or at least there's Netflix. There's always Netflix. So like, I'm not letting my hopes down on at least Brooklyn Nine Nine. But I have to let you guys down because this episode is ending. Yes, this is the end of this episode. So if you liked it, hit the like button. If you don't, leave it a dislike. Feel free to do it. But remember, for the last few months, I've been going through some tough time. And on top of that, if you dislike this video, just, just imagine how bad you're going to hurt. And if you want to watch more videos from us, check out this video right here. And if you want to subscribe, which I appreciate if you do that, do it by here. And there's Akash. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.